We looked at interpreting endpoints in observational studies. We determined the type and strength of correlation between two variables and interpreted the results of regression analysis. Now let's describe the propensity score matching technique, which is the course learning outcome number five on the course syllabus. In routine clinical pra practice, not every patient gets the same treatment because patients are different. For example, elderly patients may get uh, treatments that are better tolerated or seriously ill patients may get treatments that are known to be more effective. This leads to a correlation between patient characteristics and outcomes, which we uh, call confounding. And this confounding by indication is basically when clinicians decide what's indicated for a, for a patient based on their characteristics. And because observational studies are basically um, a reflection of clinical practice without a control, without a control group, confounding bias is common in observational studies. Now, the best way to avoid uh, confounding is by randomization. Unfortunately, in observational study, randomization is not possible. So we must rely on techniques to minimize the confounding uh, in observational studies. Uh, commonly, multivariable statistical methods are used um, in order to account for this uh, confounding or adjust for this confounding. Propensity score methods can also reduce the bias. Let's take a look at what the propensity score actually is. The propensity score is basically the probability that the patient would get the treatment based on their characteristics or based on the treating clinician's preferences or the clinical environment. And these probabilities can actually be calculated or I should say estimated using multivariable statistical method. For example, we can use logistic regression. And then once we calculate this propensity score, then we can adjust the two groups to make sure that the two uh, groups are uh, equal based on the propensity score. And propensity score methods are better than other methods. So when you evaluate observational studies, you should look for propensity score uh, methods in the studies. So if they did not have propensity score uh, methods, uh, they already have lower internal validity compared to observational studies that actually use propensity score methods. Now, there are four general ways propensity scores are used. The focus of this uh, course is on propensity score matching. The rest of them are beyond the scope of this course. So with propensity score matching, basically uh, individuals are matched with similar or actually identical propensity score. So let's say if a patient is in group A with a certain propensity score, uh, there will be another patient with the same propensity score that goes into group B. And that's how they match the two groups. And this is the best thing we can do since we cannot do randomization. And of course, since this is not randomization, there are some limitations to it. So for example, unadjusted confounding may still exist if unmeasured factors influence treatment selection. And of course, the quality of the matching depends on the quality of the propensity score model. So it's a matter of how many variables you put in the model that you think would actually affect the probability that the patient would get a certain treatment and whether those variables are available or collected in the study. In general, propensity score matching minimizes bias to a greater extent than the rest of these uh, other techniques.